Hello viewers, I hope your morning, afternoon, or evening is going well for whenever you're listening to this. Tonight, we have on our production is a very good friend of mine, Mr. Garrett Rowe. He's a 17 year old musician from Chesapeake, Maryland, and I had the pleasure of meeting this fine young gentleman at the Victory Junction Gang Camp in Randman, North Carolina. He's been a big musical influence of mine and a great friend for three years running. So, without further ado, Mr. Garrett Rowe. Hey, thank you for having me. All right. Um, so I do have a question for you, my old friend. Uh, have you written any music? And if so, tell us about it. Well, I've written quite a bit, but the problem is the actual music itself is not written. Just the, just the lyrics, so. Yeah. No. All right. Um, okay. So tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, family life, adversary that you've gone through, etc. You know, it's all about you, my friend. <laughs> well, um, as it's uh, pretty obvious in this shot here, I'm uh, confined to a wheelchair due to a spinal cord injury. And as you can probably tell as well, I have uh, one arm from a heart defect at birth, which was uh, two months earlier than it should have been. But uh, I can tell you viewers this. Don't let any kind of disability or anything like that hold you back from doing anything. Because if I were to let this type of thing hold me back from doing what I'd love to do, it'd just be a miserable life. Yeah. All right, so who were and are some of your major musical influences growing up? Who are some of your heroes? <laughs> well, the, <laughs> the biggest one is George Strait, no doubt. And then uh, some of my other ones, uh, George Jones, Alan Jackson, Earl Haggard, Keith Whitley. Oh, man, I think where I get the real attitude and shape of my music is Waylon Jennings. Because where he like he wanted to do things on his own, do it his own way, I'm kind of that same way. Yeah, and I do actually have an interesting note to point out. You actually share the, the same birthday as Keith Whitley does. Uh, yeah, I've looked it up a few times. Um, yeah, July first, if I'm not, if I'm mistaken, am I right? You got it right. All right, all right. Just wanted to make sure. All right. So, when did you start performing, and what was it like for you? Well, I started performing back in middle school. I was actually 11 years old. And this was right before a couple weeks before my mother's wedding. It was a school talent show, and uh, I did. You guessed it, a George Strait song. I did the chair that day, and <laughs> it was a it was a bit nerve wracking. But I can tell you, I, I enjoyed it from that point on. It just smooth sailing from there. <laughs> All right. Um, tell some of your fans about like what some of your hobbies are, etc. Well, some of my hobbies is they're watching NASCAR. Ha ha. Um, playing video games, hanging out with friends of mine, uh, listening to and writing music. Just having fun. Alright. Um, in terms of like people that you've known, um, who are some of your major influences growing up in that respect? Like Who's been in your corner to back you up? Friends, family, so on and so forth? Well, both my parents, they're big influences. Mine, and then uh, you've got my, my best friend Jake and my girlfriend Caitlin and too many other people to name. And <laughs> uh, just to go back to your previous statement, um, I find it actually ironic because uh, when I did my own talent show just about uh, back in January, I also performed the chair. So that's just that's just damn <laughs> ironic. <laughs> Great minds think alike, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what do you wish to accomplish in the music genre? Or what do you want? What do you anticipate with the way things are going nowadays in music in general? Well, I can definitely tell you this: music, God bless it. So, we're going more towards the money. It's all it's all about the record labels and the money these days. It used to be about the singers. It used to be about the songs. Now it's just all about the radio and the music. And the, well, the radio and the, and the money. And 
if I could change one thing about that to accomplish myself, I would probably get it back to where it was, where it was about the song, it was about the artist, it was about, it was about the feeling, the feeling of a song. Yeah. All right, now I know that now this is just talking about more so in the future, but like <clears throat> when it's time to hang up the cowboy hat, what do you want to see when it's all said and done? Like what what mark do you want to make, and what do you want people to remember? Like, man, I just want people to remember what was good about country music and what can be great about country music again if we all strive to get it back to where it was. Like, I can tell you, I like the old traditional stuff, but I like some of this rock and build stuff, too. But I can tell you, if you, throw, if you dare throw a Taylor Swift song at me, I will dare boot you right out the door for, and tell you to go give that song to Taylor Swift. <laughs> All right. Um, any personal mottos or beliefs that you have to keep on going? Well, my, my motto is just... Just follow your heart. If you follow your heart, it's going to get you a long way in this world. Alright. Um, describe to us what country music is and what it means to you. Country music, to me, it's it's a story. It's a story of... could be many different things. It could be about a lost love. It could be about someone falling in love. It could be about going out and having a beer with a bunch of your buddies. It's just about a good story, good story to be told, and how it impacts you as a listener. Alright, any funny stories involved uh, with singing or anything in general? Well, yeah, I actually got one, one that it kind of, kind of is a bit of a, bit of a prelude to your next question, actually. It, it came from the Shotgun Red Show, and uh, when I was moving all around the stage with that footage and all that stuff, the producer told me to blow a kiss to his girlfriend. <laughs> and <laughs> what wound up happening, he wound up teasing me after the fact, <laughs> thinking I guess, I, was, I guess he thought I was trying to hit on his woman or something, which wasn't the truth. <laughs> but <laughs> it was just an amusing anecdote to me. Ooh, all right. Well, uh, well thankfully, um, from what you told me through Facebook and uh, just being friends and everything like that, you told me a while back that you uh, got to go to the Shotgun Red Show in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, tell us about your experience at the show. Like, what was it like? Oh, man. It, well, let me just say this. For those of you all who've never been to Nashville, get there. Cause it is an incredible city to be in. I'm telling you. It may be a big city, but it's really got a small town feel with uh, all the people there. They, they just make you feel welcome. But to the show itself, I uh, actually got there through um, through an audition tape to the producer Steve Hall because he was looking for action. I was just looking for an opportunity, so I sent the guy a video of "Put Some Drive in Your Country" from last year's Texaco Country Showdown and landed me onto that show and uh we pushed and clawed and all that good stuff to get me back down there in february to tape and first time working with a country band and i can tell you it was man, some of the most fun i've ever had up on a stage all right um what are your plans for the next few years uh what are you going to be doing in your time well my, my plans for the next few years Hopefully to continue with this music thing and uh, definitely going to college to major in media production and just try to see what pans out with that. Okay. Um, we actually answered my uh, question number 11. What do you, what do you want to study in college? Um, I, guess I, can, <laughs> I guess I can go to the next one. Um, if yeah. you wouldn't mind, my old friend, uh, would you mind maybe singing a little bit uh, for the, for the uh, viewing audience at home? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think I'll do my interpretation of George Jones, the same old me. Alright. I'm still the same old me I'm the same sweet you Time hasn't withered our 
hearts. And when our days are through, I'll still be loving you. Even death can't keep us apart. Great job, my friend. Always angelic and beautiful as always. <laughs> Thanks, dude. You're welcome. Alright, well with that being said, uh, any venues or locations that you'll be partaking at? Any new videos that will be coming up here sometime soon? Well, uh, I'm planning on uh, doing the Texaco Country Showdown again in Eastern Maryland at the Avalon Theater on Saturday night, August 3rd. Mm -hmm. And hopefully there will be a couple videos taken there to go up on the channel soon after that. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, any information or words of wisdoms for the fan out there or any new musicians that might want to follow in your footsteps for that matter? For all of you young fans out there who want to make a career of this, just uh, do anything you can to get your foot in the door, but stay true to yourself at the same time. I'll admit I've made a couple mistakes trying to just keep myself going. I've stupidly enough played with a metal band twice and mistake I'll <clears throat> never make again but uh, just stay true to yourself when you're trying to make a career of this alright well thank you so much for being in this production my friend it was a pleasure to sit down and get to talk to you after this long while and I <laughs> hope to be standing in the crowd cheering you on when you're up there on stage out in Nashville thank you thank you for having me Alright, thank you folks for listening to our production. Just remember folks, live each day with a smile on your face, and the world will become a better place. Thank you again, Garrett, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you.